Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. It's the final part of my mini series looking at my top five pens at the start of 2022. Week one, we looked at pens under 100 Australian dollars. Week two, they were between 100 and 200 Australian dollars. This week, it's the turn of those pens that are over 200 Australian dollars. So join me now down on the mat. Let's jump on in and take a look at this top five. Welcome down to the mat. Now, apologies if there's any background noise. I am recording this on Boxing Day and the neighbour, he's cutting his grass at the moment. I've got all the doors and windows shut, so hopefully I'll be able to edit out most of it. But if you hear the odd rumble of a lawnmower, it's the neighbours. So we're going to take a look now at my top five pens over 200 Australian dollars. We'll jump straight in with the first pen. And this is a Pilot pen. It's a Pilot Custom Heritage 92. So the Custom Heritage range, they've got the flat tops. Whereas the Custom range, they've got more like a domed top. We may see a Custom pen later on in the list. This is in a black transparent material. I quite enjoy it. It's a bit difficult to see the ink, although this is fairly full of ink at the moment. Now, one of the reasons why this is at position number five, yes, it's a piston mechanism, but the piston mechanism takes up two thirds of the body, so it doesn't actually hold all that much ink. If we take off the cap, we've got here a 14 carat gold nib. It's been rhodium plated. Now this, it's may been very, very picky. It's a gold nib. Don't hide it. Let's see the gold. It's a small nib. It's a Pilot number no. 5 nib. The pen's a nice fit in my hand. It can feel a bit on the short side, especially when I'm doing longer writing sessions. The cap does post. I tend to use this pen posted if I'm using it for more than a couple of sentences. So let's do some writing. So we've got here a Pilot Custom Heritage 92. It's got a medium nib. Cost-wise, when I bought this two years ago, it was 270 Australian dollars. It's gone up in price since then. The ink, it's by Van Diemen, which is an Australian company. And it's Apple Island Green. Now, I've tried this ink in a number of different pens and really struggled to find a pen that really suits until I put it into here. So now, at the moment, until all this Apple Island Green is gone, this is the only ink that I'm going to put into this Custom Heritage 92. I really like the combo. Wetness. Now, I'll just write a sentence. I enjoy using this pen. It's nice. Yes, it's a little bit on the thin side. Not uncomfortably, sir. Why it's coming at position number five, I've got to be honest, it's mainly due to the fact that this piston mechanism is just so big. And yes, I know it needs to be, but it does limit the amount of ink that you can hold in here. It's a nice pen. It writes lovely, as we can see here. It's got a nice soft nib. It bounces a little bit, but we get a nice, generous, medium line from it, which I was quite surprised with. When I ordered this, I was expecting the medium to be a lot finer than it is. I'm not upset about that. I prefer broad nibs anyway, and this is just so nice. Get a nice load of shading coming out of my writing. Just looks so pretty. So this is position number five. The Pilot Custom Heritage 92. At position number four, that goes to the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. This selection of five pens was so hard. 
And to be honest, the order changes depending on what day it is, what time of day it is. They're all so close. You know, I had to rank them. But this could have equally have been number one as it could have been number four. This is the dark Hawaii colour. Just look at these gorgeous blues and browns. So you've got the blues of the sea and the sky. Then you've got the browns there of the sand and the soil. I think it looks really nice. Take the cap off. Here we've got a number six size nib. I believe this is made for Leonardo by Yoho. Really nice steel nib. Got a nice Leonardo feed there as well. One of the things I like with this model is the section. The way that it's, it's stepping down. I think this is so comfortable. My fingers, yes, they sit near the bottom and they just rest where it goes up. To me, this is brilliant. Now, I know that Leonardo seemed to be moving away from this. I think that's a shame. I really enjoy it. One of the reasons why I moved this down to position number four, this is a piston filling pen. It's no ink window, so there's no way to know how much ink is in the pen. And that's bitten me a few times. You know, I've been in a meeting, I've been using this, and suddenly it would stop writing because it's out of ink. Now, fortunately, I always have a couple of other pens with me, but you don't really want a pen to run out when you're halfway through writing your notes, do you? It's the Grand Air model. It's got a really nice size. Will post. To me, it's overly long when it's posted. Nice and comfy, unposted. Let's do some writing. So we've got here a Leonardo. Memento. Zero. Grand Air. Wow, that's a long name, isn't it? It's a medium nib. It cost me 377 Aussie dollars when I bought it. The ink is by Diamine. And it's called Pick Me Up. Very nice dark brown ink. It's got a scent to it. It's a scented ink. It smells very sweet like coffee. You know, Pick Me Up coffee, you can understand that. As it dries... There's also a green sheen. We'll have a look for that after we finish the writing. Drying. This is a very wet ink. Let's write the sentence. writes really nice on this Oxford optic paper. What I'm going to do up here, I'm just going to do a quick scribble there. Hopefully, if the sheen doesn't come through on the writing, it may develop there where I've gone really thick and wet. Now, as you can see, uh, by doing that, I've now got something on the end there, so I'm getting an even wetter line. I'll just wipe that off. Seem to have developed a blob of paper. There we go. That looks nicer now. Let's take a look at this ink. Are we seeing any of that green sheen? Not really. You know, we've got this beautiful shading brown colour. See, you know, some pills. And then we've got mainly this dark brown. Nice ink for taking to a meeting because you know it's brown. They might not. I do see some of the green where I've done my scribble. That's why I've deliberately done that. Start to see some of that green sheen coming through there. I like this ink. I like this pen. Well, I like all the pens. As I say, any one of these pens could have been position number one. So I've been very picky in little things that normally wouldn't bother me. They're what I'm using to separate them in the list. But this is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. Move the page up. Pen number three. This is the prettiest pen in my collection. This is the Narwhal 365. This is the Nautilus model. And this was the 365 from 2021. This is in the Jonathan Brooks Primary Manipulation 3.5 material. And the model name 365, there's only 365 in the collection. I think this looks really nice. It's pretty. It's acrylic. 
it's in that really nice nautilus shape it's a piston filling pen so we've got the piston mechanism it's hidden though and unlike the leonardo we have an ink window now i'm being very very picky here i would have liked the ink window to have been twice the width i do sometimes struggle to see the ink level through there i can just about make it out most of the time but just take a look at this pen i say it's so pretty you know, we've got greens, browns, blues, purples, yellows, golds. So nice. Let's see what it's like there. So I was about to start writing. We need to look at the nib first, don't we? Here's the nib. This is a Narwhal nib. Now these are made in-house by Narwhal. I have a couple of other Narwhal pens where I've been able to swap the nib out and put a Yoho nib in it. If you're going to do that, remember, you do it at your own risk. Let's write with this pen. So we've got a narwhal. Yes, I'll use a new spelling. I'm going to call it a nautilus, because that's the shape. 365. With a medium nib. Steel nib. This cost me 241 Australian dollars. I don't know if they're available for sale anymore. I'll say there was only 365 pens in the series. The ink is by Diamine. And it's called Festive Joy. This was in the 2021 ink vent calendar. Nice purple ink. And I thought that picks up quite nice because we've got some nice purple tones in this material. This is a beauty with this pen. You can use virtually any colour because you can find a colour in there somewhere. Wetness. And I'll write my sentence. The nib does feel a little bit on the stiff side. Certainly when you compare it with the Pilot Custom Heritage 92, which was really nice and springy, this does feel stiff. Not overly so. I mean, I've got a number of Chinese pens where it's like writing with a nail. It doesn't feel like that, but it still feels stiff when I'm writing. The ink is a standard ink, so we don't have any sheen or shimmer. It's a nice colour. Get not much in the way of shading though so there's not a lot of character in this combo it's still nice one of the beauties with this the piston filler does hold a lot i find with this pen i need to fill it every couple of months very nice so this is the narwhal nautilus 365 move the page up so which pen have i decided to come in at position number two i say it's very hard decision any one of them could have been position number one I've decided to go for the Diplomat Aero. This is in the factory finish. I love the factory finish. You know, it's just a raw aluminium. I think there might be a coating on it. I've had this about 18 months and I'm not seeing anything developing, any pattern or anywhere where like the sweat from my hands is interacting with the metal. So I think there is a coating on this. It's a nice pen. It's unusual, a bit like a torpedo shape, isn't it? Take the cap off. If the cap pulls off, I'd like it if the cap was a screw off rather than a pull off. Just being very picky. Fits nice in my hand. Section doesn't feel slippery, even though it's metal. Does feel a little bit on the thin side. It doesn't bother me too much. Just be aware it is thin. The nib is a number six size nib. This is another nib I believe is made by Yoho to diplomat specifications. So a lot of the pens we've been looking at today are Yoho nibs. This is a cartridge converter. Let me just get in. That was nice and tight there. There's a cartridge converter. Look, we've got a red ink today. Beauty of this factory finish. Any colour ink will go well with it. Metal fittings. Don't even think about eyedropper in this pen. In the hand, unposted. I find this really nice. It will post. 
I just find that the cap is loose. Uh, you can see it's like wobbling around. Doesn't feel comfy when I'm writing. So I use it unposted. So we've got here a diplomat. Error. With a broad nib. Again, when I bought this, we're talking 263 Australian dollars. Chances are it's gone up by now. The ink by Pilot. And it's Uro Shizuku. Momiji. Now, when I got back into fountain pens, this was one of the first two inks that I bought. I bought this one, and I also bought Pilot Uro Shizuku Shinryoku, which is a green ink. The pictures I saw of this, they looked a lot redder. In life, I think, yes, it's a red, but there's a, it's a lot more pink tendon than what I would have liked with my other reds. And maybe I need to do a comparison of this with something like Diamine Poppy Red. Let me just make a note. Now, I've just made a note of that for a future video. Drying times. Yeah, that's fairly wet. Got a bit of the purple in. I'm just going to do that again on the line above. Let's try and find a clean finger. Yeah, as you see, you know, it's moderately wet. This is a problem today. I'm actually recording four videos. I try to record back to back. So that my hands end up covered in all sorts of different colors. Let's write the sentence. This is a very smooth nib. There's very little in the way of feedback. Now, it's not quite glassy smooth, but it's getting very, very close. To me, it's one of the things that I don't enjoy. I like tactileness when I'm writing, and I don't get as much of that as I'd like from this nib. I'm not saying it's unpleasant. It isn't. That's why it's position number two, isn't it? But it's just something that isn't there. And if the tactileness had been there, I think this would have definitely been number one. That's the only thing I can really ding this on. If we look at the ink, say it's got this nice pinky red. Now I've never seen it. Some people have said that there's a bit of a gold sheen to it. I've never been able to see that. Could be I need you know a wetter pen to really fetch that out. But all in all it's still it's a nice pen. It's a solid position number two. So this is the diplomat error. Let's move that page one last time. And the final pen, the one that comes in at position number one of my top five pens, over 200 Australian dollars. It goes to the Pilot Custom 823. This is in the transparent brown. This is a beautiful pen. It's not as good looking as the Narwhal 365. It's classic. It's a pen you could take anywhere. You know, that now all 365, no way I could take that to a business meeting. This one, I could be sat there, pull it out and not feel at all embarrassed by the way it looks. It's just a really classic pen. It's got this transparent nature. So hopefully you can see the ink there sloshing away inside the barrel. It's a vacuum filler. So to fill it, let me just push that down. You would undo this cap, pull it out, pop it in the ink, slowly press this cap down. That creates a vacuum behind the plunger. When it gets near the bottom, the inside of the body widens a bit. That releases the vacuum and it sucks the ink in. The other benefit of this, as you see now, this plunger, hopefully if I angle it like that, the plunger's at the bottom, that's sealing off the section from the body. When I open it up, See the plunger coming up? That's now letting the ink from the body flow down into the section. So if you're traveling, make sure you screw it all the way down because that way, if you have an issue with pressure, you're not going to lose an entire pen worth of ink. The downside of this is you need to make sure you remember to open this when you're writing because if you don't, you'll end up using up what's in the section and it'll stop writing. Then you're going to start thinking, well, why isn't that writing for me? 
what I do if I'm at home, I open this up as soon as I take it out of my bag and I'll leave it open. And I only close it down again when I'm actually going out. In my hand, nice comfy fit. The section, just about the right width. It's postable. I don't bother posting it, but you can if you want to. That's quite a solid posting pen. The nib, number 15 size pilot nib. 14 karat gold. And unlike the Custom Heritage 92, this one isn't plated. It's a gold nib. It looks gold. And I think that makes a big difference. Let's do some writing there. So we've got here a pilot custom 823. It's a custom because it's got the domed ends. It's a broad nib. This cost me 394 Australian dollars. It is the most expensive pen I have. The ink is by Herban. I can never remember if it's Herban or J Herban. So I'll just write Herban. And it's Terre. Can't spell French today. Terre de Fouet. Or Terre de Fou. I can never remember how to pronounce that. English is my primary language. And I struggle with all other languages, I will be honest. Terre de Fou or Terre de Fouet translates though to Land of Fire. And living in Australia, the colour of this, it does remind me of the colour of the soil, especially when you get out into the actual outback, it's a lot redder. And I can see where that's coming from here. You know, that's a land of fire. Let's look for wetness. You know, moderately wet. And then we'll write a sentence. This pen, it's a joy to write with. It's not as soft, it's not as bouncy as the Custom Heritage 92, but there's some, there is some softness to it. There's a lovely feedback. It's not quite the pencil feedback that I get with a platinum pen, but you can certainly feel that underneath the sponginess, you can feel that pencil there as well. We get a nice line. This is a broad nib. You know, it's nice, generous broad nib as well. We're seeing some lovely shading. Every single word we've got shading in it. To me, that brings character to my writing. And that's something I see regardless of what ink I've had in this pen. They've all had really nice character in the writing. But this is well worth position number one, the Pilot Custom 823. Let me just get this page out of the way and I'll fetch in the pens for one final look. So here are my top five pens, over 200 Australian dollars. We've got the Pilot Custom Heritage 92, the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande, the Now War Nautilus 365, the Diplomat Aero, and coming in at position number one, the Pilot Custom 823. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I've enjoyed making this series, I hope you've enjoyed it too. What are your top five pens over 200 Australian dollars? Please drop a comment down below. I'd be really interested to get your thoughts and start a conversation on it. Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.